vaccine. I am having my vaccine to protect against COVID. Make sure you have yours too. When you have it, you'll understand what happiness is. Look, a new life will begin. Seriously. <laughs> seriously, eh? Seriously, Carol. Thanks for clearing that up because uh, I was worried that I was in some kind of horrible fever dream there for a second. Anyway, what's the uh, idea with today's video? Uh, hopefully we can take a look at how unhinged, how damn polarised society has become. Are we not human? Can we not get along? When you get the chance, have it. It's safe. It's effective, it doesn't hurt, and we all need it to beat the virus. So have your vaccine and make COVID a memory. So my objective with today's video is not to say whether I'm for it or again it, you know. Uh, I'm not going to give any personal opinions. God knows I have none. Don't even think about trying to demonetize me. I am, however, going to take a look at a short clip from GB News, which I'm sure you all love. And in this clip, I think we see a perfect illustration of why neither side is helping their cause. Neither side is helping their arguments to be heard. Not necessarily one side more than the other. Let's just take a look. Um, but, you know, I want to take issue with what Bev said about it being a trial drug. It wasn't a trial drug. It's still a trial drug. No, it's like, not it, a trial drug. Do you, <laughs> you realise that every vaccine that is produced is, in effect, a trial drug? Slow down, Carol. That patronising tone really isn't helping anything. Literally peering at us over the top of her glasses. Pseudo-intellectual. Hack! <laughs> Uh, no, 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 this, no, no. Is, let me, I let, can't believe no, no. we're still having this no, conversation. No, no, like, oh, maybe you, for the love you of had God. a long say there, so let everyone else have a say. The smallpox vaccine, when it came out in the 50s, caused myocardia in young men. The polio vaccine, when it came out, it, people died because of the polio virus. In 2008, which isn't that long ago, uh, babies developed febrile seizures because of the MMR vaccine after seven to ten days. There's a miss. There, there's so, our friend. Carol here is actually making some points that would make, I think, a lot of people who are sceptical about vaccines sit up and listen. They'd say, oh, right, other vaccines have had side effects. So I guess we have to do a cost benefit analysis. That's interesting. Let's talk about that. If Carol was truly interested in persuading people who are of a different opinion to her own, that they were in the wrong, what she would do is present them with essentially Socratic questions. What do you think about this? What do you think about the fact that there were some negative side effects of the polio vaccine or the smallpox vaccine? What uh, Carol does though is steamroll her opposition with what she considers to be sophisticated fact after statistic, which could all be refuted, could all be debated, but of course she's not interested in engaging anyone in an actual debate. She considers those who think differently to herself uh, to be her intellectual inferiors. Hence her fucking patronising, annoying song at the beginning of this video as she was getting her vaccine. She's singing to people who think differently to her because she considers them primary school children, and she's the teacher. The, you know, we know that vaccines aren't a cure-all for everyone, but, but the bottom line is the COVID vaccine, and this is a guy, he was, he's a guy called Paul Goford, a very, he's the director of vaccine research at the University of Alabama. He says he's never, ever seen a vaccine as effective as COVID. Of course, 90 my first question 90 would be, who is funding that guy? Let me finish, Bev. Let me, let me, Bev, you know, this is the one. You know, this is exactly why people like myself and I think a lot of people in my generation just don't watch the TV anymore. We're sick of legacy media programs like this where people have like 30 seconds to get their point across. It doesn't matter how good their point is, you don't get a chance to refute it. You don't get a chance to really flesh out an argument on one side or the other. Neither of the uh, two parties come away from these debates any wiser. That's why people are listening to Joe Rogan, you know, because whether the people he invites on are right 
or wrong, at least you get to hear exactly what they think. Even then, after three hours of conversation, you're left with plenty of doubts and questions. But in 30 seconds, she's rattled off side effects of the smallpox vaccine, side effects of the polio vaccine, and has now moved on to quoting an epidemiologist from some university. Well, we have to sit down and speak about all of those points for maybe 20 minutes each. Instead, all we've got is the person who's trying to present the counter-argument, desperately trying to address the final point she's made, and the only thing that she can do is say the first thing that comes into her head, which is the ad hominem argument of, well, can we trust that guy because do we know who's been funding him? It's nothing. There is nothing. Both sides come away from that thinking the other one is a lunatic. What happens? People who disagree with people who, who like you, don't agree with the vaccine. The, you, you no one, no one is ever allowed to speak. So, oh, what this, me, what this, were what this, what this, well, I'm, I'm trying now. The, the guy, this guy said 90% decreased risk of infections, 94% effectiveness against hospitalization. So whatever you say about well, I, this okay. being a trial drug, it saved lives and what? you can't get away from that fact. And if people have been damaged by this, I'm very sorry. I really am. And I don't say that glibly or lightly. But the thing is, this vaccine saved many millions of lives. And we know that for a fact. We don't know that for a fact. Yes, we do. I'm so yes, sorry. We do. But we don't know that for a fact. Okay, well, I so everything Carol said before, you either believe it outright or completely discredit it because that's how you came into this debate if you're on one side or the other. And then Carol just kind of rests her case on... The vaccine has saved millions of lives. You can't debate it. And of course, the other woman says, well, hang on, I think I can debate that. But there is no debate. There is no intention of debate. And that's, again, something that would take a couple of hours to sit down and sift through information and think about all kinds of factors. You know, just off the top of my head, I would think, well, do we know how many people would have died without the vaccines? We don't know. We don't know, right? I'm not saying that what I decide is right. I'm just saying, can you put a number on how many people's lives have been saved by the vaccine? No, I don't think you can, Carol. Well, let oh. me tell you, let me tell and, you what and, happened to the people who didn't get the vaccine, the elderly in the care homes. In the first two months of the pandemic, in the first two months of the pandemic, 35,000 elderly people died. In one week, 7,000 elderly people died. They didn't have the vaccine. Later, as, as it progressed and they got the vaccine, those numbers but were if not you're dying. You're not the saying care. the vulnerable should not be vaccinated, are you? This is a very. What we saw in the last two years was people like Carol, who I have a huge amount of respect for, but on this particular... Well, you haven't because you're saying people like Carol, people who thought the vaccine worked and it has worked. So just again there, in like 30 seconds of this shit show of a conversation, we see several points that really need to be fleshed out more. Carol makes the point that in the first wave of the COVID virus uh, that uh, we saw 35,000 elderly people die, with the suggestion being that without the vaccine, uh, around that amount of elderly people would die in every subsequent wave of COVID. We don't know that. Could be an attribution error. Perhaps in the first couple of waves, the most elderly and infirm patients were culled, essentially. They died off and there would be fewer of them to die off in the subsequent waves. That's a possibility. I don't know, but it's something you would have to sit down and think about, I think. You can't just rattle it off as a fact like that. And then Dan Wooten tries to intervene saying, well, you're not saying that the elderly shouldn't be vaccinated, which is another point. I, maybe, if you listen to the other person, she's saying that we should protect the elderly, right? And that we shouldn't force uh, younger people to be getting the vaccine. Maybe that's a point that needs to be listened to. People like Carol, who were on those panel shows alongside me, were reading the Daily Mail. And they were reading the oh, mainstream please, media. And in me order... or anybody to else saying we just this, read one It was paper. absolutely necessary to go and look and find the epidemiologists. And you really think we didn't do that, didn't. seriously? Who, uh, yeah, it's so it's insulting to, to say that a journalist only reads the Daily Mail. I have read 
on team papers. So what do you think of the latest findings of Dr. Ryan Cole? What do you think of what Dr. Robert Malone has said? What do you, what do well, you I know think? exactly what I think of what Dr. Maloney said. He's been on this show and I've said what I think about the guy. Don't try and catch me out about the no, virologists that, I've, that I've read. Read I've read the people. as much as These you, if not... aren't going to be on the mainstream media. They just aren't. Just, if you're not looking at this guy's face the whole time, then go back and watch the rest of the video. He's amazing. Again, these petty ad hominem arguments, uh, the appeal to superior knowledge, all that kind of thing, all these uh, logical fallacies, which just don't help anything. You know, uh, she discredits Carol, and I keep saying she because I don't know her name, sorry. Uh, she's discrediting Carol for only having read the Daily Mail. It's just a cheap shot. And, uh, of course, uh, Carol gets very defensive and starts saying, I've read every vi virologist. I've, <laughs> I, I, I've read umpteen papers. Uh, sure you have, Carol. But even so, I think both of them are using very cheap tactics to try and win this 30-second debate. It's, it's bizarre. It's pointless. It's getting us nowhere. And I was, I was vilified for, for trying to and Malone to make... has been discredited in many quarters, let me tell you. Oh. Yes, he has. M Malone has been discredited in many quarters, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I know things. I know things you don't know. Mm. Yes, you he has. That, uh, I... Final word, Benjamin. Do you accept that the COVID vaccine worked? Have you had it yourself? I think in terms of does it work, we are still... We still have no long-term data. And if you well, look at the latest that's, interview, that's it's Joe Vandenbosch today but, talking about the fact that indiscriminate point. vaccination different. during a pandemic will cause the mutations. Have you had it? It is still a moving... It is still a Have moving, you had the vaccine? And again, oh, my God. Well, have I you? Arrive in, literally arrived in a time machine today. Have, have you? not moved on. We're all stupid and you know better. Not a, and you're not a virologist, but you know better. I also... Oh, dear Lord. That last clip I put on was... 35 seconds long and four different points were made by three people. <laughs> it's just impossible. So let's just recap those last 35 seconds. Uh, two points made by the woman on the right. Uh, she thinks that maybe uh, we don't have long-term data about the side effects, the negative side effects of the vaccine. A fair point. Things that need to be taken into consideration in a debate like this. Um, two, that the mutations might be accelerated by the high levels of vaccination amongst the population. Fair point, something that we might have to talk about. And then we've got the sort of nasty attacks from the other two who were uh, ganging up on her a little bit there, uh, saying that, have you had the vaccine yourself? Which is something she doesn't feel she has to answer and is completely irrelevant to the point she is making right now. And then you've got Carol chiming in again. Oh, you're not a, you're, you, you know better than all of us and we're all stupid and you're not a virologist, which by the way, you're not either, Carol. You're also very much, and I've maintained this, Did my values and my standards Did on you refuse issue, the vaccine? No. Which is that well, I will never publicly answer that question. There have been it's people who... who say. There are people who say... It, it's so irrelevant, Carol. It's just ridiculous. It's not irrelevant. OK. I believe the in the is, principle still be in of medical... If everyone had taken that okay. view. Now, exactly. oh, and let's be move on. Uh, so hopefully the YouTube algorithm will notice that I have not given any personal opinions in this video and um, and um, and it will be monetized fully fully monetized which would uh, which would be nice you know yeah never lose hope